costs are part of every production process, and therefore every firm has to take them into account. To better explain and illustrate cost analysis in the short run, we will simultaneously use two different graphs. The upper graph represents output produced in the horizontal axis, and cost of the output produced in the vertical axis. In this graph, we'll draw the fixed cost curve, the variable cost curve, and the total cost curve. The lower graph still measures output produced in the horizontal axis, and average and marginal cost is measured in the vertical axis. When output increases, the average fixed cost will decrease, since dividing a fixed cost into a greater number of output units makes it smaller. We now draw in the lower graph the marginal cost curve, which is drawn by analyzing the slope of the total cost curve in the upper graph. The point where the marginal cost is lowest matches the point where the slope of the total cost curve is equal to zero. The average variable cost curve measures the average cost per unit of output produced. Its minimum point matches the point where the marginal cost curve crosses the average variable cost curve. We can use the same method in order to draw the average total cost, which is derived from the total cost curve. Its minimum point matches the point where the marginal cost curve crosses the average total cost curve. We label point E as the point where production is more efficient, and point E prime as the point where production starts making sense to the firm from an economic point of view. Let's see why. Phase 1 corresponds to the part of the graph where average variable cost is still decreasing. During this phase, until the marginal cost is equal to average variable cost, the firm will be incurring in great losses, equal to both its variable and fixed cost. Therefore, the firm won't be producing at all. Phase 2 corresponds to the phase at which variable costs are not yet high enough, and where marginal cost is below average total cost. The yellow line that stretches through this part of the marginal cost determines a level of output at which the firm will still be incurring in losses, but corresponding only to fixed costs. Here the firm may produce, since the more they produce, the closer they get to their break-even point. Lastly, in phase 3, the firm is now able to cover both its fixed and variable costs. The last part of the marginal cost curve, highlighted in green, corresponds to a production level that guarantees some profit as long as the market structure allows it. This analysis of costs helps us understand how firms make decisions about their production process, depending on their average and marginal costs. However, we must keep in mind that cost analysis may vary from the short run to the long run.